Abbott, and I met Sharon two years ago. <laughs> We're trying to reduce our age. <laughs> um, quite a while ago, actually, when I was living back in the Bay Area, just uh, started my financial services practice, uh -oh. and she had a, a company that was similar to like a BNI or the TIP. It was called Elite Leads, and it had about 20 or 30 people that would meet. And a lot of those businesses were starting out and flourished and became very successful. And Sharon's worked with over 2,500 businesses, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and helped them get momentum and sustain their success. She's written eight books, which are here. She's got audio programs, which uh, you'll hear about. And she's basically, she's a national expert in social media. She's appeared on Oprah. You know, how many people would love to get on Oprah? So I'm sure we'll hear a little bit about that. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Sharon Abbott. Thank you very much. I have to say I'm very jealous of the environment that you live in. It is just so beautiful up here. I want to make sure, does everybody have a handout? Anyone not have a handout? Yes, sir. Does everybody have one? Yeah. Oh, very cool. Sharon, where do you live? Uh, San Leandro. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, I grew up in Mendocino, right? So I'm kind of jealous of this. Um, so how many of you, let me get a kind of a temperature of the room. How many of you actually have a Facebook presence? Let me ask, does anyone not have a Facebook presence? <laughs> Your hand didn't go up any other time. I'm watching you. Oh, I was looking over here. <laughs> <laughs> it went up. <laughs> so, how many of you have gotten business from Facebook? Very good. So, tell me about the business that you ended up getting from Facebook. There's really not much to tell. Um, I hired someone to actually do the work for me because it was... I found it a little daunting, the learning curve was very high. Uh, but, you know, we've had some conversions from people who discuss our product and like it and ultimately wind up on our site and purchase. And what's your business? We sell nutritional supplement. Fantastic, fantastic. So one of the things that I found, this was in 2008, and I was just releasing my sixth book. It's called Create Your Own Reality, The Ancient Wisdom. And one of the reasons I wrote this book is my little brother, Tony, uh, had colon cancer, and the hospital in Dallas infected him with HIV, and they gave him five months to live. And through the process that I had been exposed to when the doctor gave me a tetanus shot with an antibiotic, it caused Epstein-Barr virus. Mm. And every organ in my body did a hard failure. And so every time I went near a doctor, he'd say, oh, you have five months to live. So I not only had every organ fail, but I had breast cancer, I had muscular dystrophy, I couldn't walk a block. I mean, I literally couldn't walk. Now I'm wearing five-inch heels. Um, you know, and, and every time somebody would say, you can't do this, I would find a solution around it. And so I went on to Facebook, and this man, John Bonner, in New Jersey, he said, would you add me as a friend? I had four friends. It was May 15th, four years ago. And I'm like, God, not another LinkedIn. I was 78, the 78th person who signed up on LinkedIn. And I thought, well, I'm usually more open-minded than that. So I went ahead and added John as a friend. And I thought, why don't I go see who his friends are? Deepak Chopra, <laughs> Victor Hansen, Jack Canfield, Robert Kiyosaki, and I thought, oh my God, I hit pay dirt. <laughs> so I sat there for an hour, went add a friend, add a friend, add a friend, and they finally said, looks like you're spamming, you better stop. So I quit, and the next morning I got up, I had 96 friends. Isn't that amazing? But out of those 96 friends, I ended up building 4,700 friends in six yeah. months. On LinkedIn or Facebook? Facebook. Now, that isn't that much of an accomplishment. There's four chairs, if you'd like to come over. Yeah, thank Be you for saying that. Yeah, please. Um, so what I did is I actually built relationships with absolutely every person through a text, through a phone call, somehow connected with them. So this is the difference that most people have 5,000 friends on Facebook, but they haven't a clue who is on Facebook. They have no idea who they're connected with. So you know how you can look at people 
and you can think. Have you ever done real estate? Uh, kind of, yeah. Uh -huh, kind of, right? So people have a look depending on what they do. So I can look at somebody's picture and I can kind of get an idea this is what you'd be really good at, even if you're not doing it. It would be something that you're very good at. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit towards the end. But I had eight people who booked me for radio interviews from Facebook in the first three weeks I was on Facebook. Isn't that amazing? I went in Spain, I went in London, one in Toronto, and then the rest were in the United States. It was absolutely incredible. And I thought, even in my local community where I'm teaching entrepreneur skills, I've never had that much luck, right? That immediate connection where people are saying, let me help you. There's chairs over here? Yeah. There, here, and one here. And you can actually move it so it's not behind the pole if you want that one over there. There's one more chair over here. You just want to say you have a sold-out house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Standing room only. Yeah. <laughs> There's one back in the Oh, good. Okay, so one more person can show up. Um, <laughs> so I ended up doing radio interviews and sold over a thousand books the first six months I had published this book. But I want to tell you that social media has a lot more power than most people understand. So basically what you're going to learn today is why you should use social media. So there's several ways that you can use social media. And the one that I love to use is building relationships. Because I think that that's fundamental. But the cool thing is I no longer have to drive an hour to actually connect with somebody. It's immediate. It's on the phone. And some of the people that I have met over the last five years, I just can't even imagine that I could have these kinds of relationships. Mm -hmm. Is there still one more chair? There's one here. Okay, there's your lucky seat right there. <laughs> so, which sites actually suit your type of business or your personality? How many people are on LinkedIn? That's surprising. Now, compared to, this is about two-thirds compared to almost 100% on Facebook. Compared to Facebook, how many of you have actually done business on LinkedIn? See, much smaller number. But I'm going to tell you how all of you can do business on LinkedIn. <coughs> um, how to get the most out of each type of social media that you're looking for. How to develop a workable routine. Um, how many of you get lost when you get on the internet? Right? Three hours later, you have no idea what happened to three hours. Or you think you're going for a specific reason, and an hour later, you can't even remember what it was. Right? That's called ADD. ADD. <laughs> and then how to actually leverage your social media contacts, which is my favorite thing. Right? You can do more business on an international basis than you can do locally. And that's what I want everyone to learn. So this is what happened. I'm an info junkie. I admit it. I love research. I love learning things. But then what I like to do is turn it around to see how we can make it practical to actually use. Because I don't care how great the information is, if you're not using it, it's worthless. So I saw this study and it said one in eight people do something to earn their income that they enjoy. Uh, there's something wrong with this picture, right? So people are actually in the United States of their own free will working at a job they don't like, which generally doesn't even support them. How does that make sense to anybody? So what I figured out is how to turn that around so that we actually can take what your passion is, what your innate skills are with your <coughs> learned skills, and turn it into something where you can create an income that exceeds what you've ever done before. And it's simple enough that everybody, without fail, everybody can do that, work half as much time, and get twice the result. So that was my goal when I had Elite Leads. That's what I was doing. I worked not only, Matron said, 2,500 people, but out of 2,500 people, 90% are still in business today. That's the opposite of a national average. The reason is, <clears throat> Up until about 10 years ago, we didn't have an entrepreneurship program in colleges, right? They didn't teach you how. In fact, the best business courses were taught by the chiropractic schools, 
Do you have any chiropractors in the house? Not one? There was one. Okay. <laughs> what else have you done? <laughs> so this is, this is one of the things you <clears throat> must embrace to stay ahead of the curve. I take at least one teleclass every week. I don't care. At least one every single week. It could be on teleseminars. It could be on joint ventures. It could be on blogging. I teach my own blog class. And I still, every single week, I take a course. I'm also doing at least one or two teleseminars myself or webinars. Something I didn't put in the program, how many of you actually would like to do a webinar? Have you heard of webinar swaps? It is so cool. They promote your webinar. And all you do is present it. They already have over 100,000 people in their database who enjoy taking webinars. Isn't that cool? So what you want to do is a PowerPoint presentation. I use Camtasia to do the voiceover. Send them a link of where that webinar is. They look at it. If they like the content, they let you do it on webinar swaps. They do all the promotion. The webinar is free, but then you have an upsell at the end of the webinar. And then they get 40% of what you're selling. But it's their database, so it's a cool idea, and you don't have to go out somewhere to do it, right? And you get clients from all over the world. It's really fun. What did you say you were, um, what software were you using? Camtasia. C-A-M-T-A-S-I-A. -A -A. It's probably the easiest. So here's some of my stats. Um, I didn't put everything up there because it would look ridiculous. I have seven Twitter accounts. Um, <laughs> But this is a point to be aware of. Every account you have should be specific, right? So if you're doing health products, don't mingle your personal photos, your family stories in that page. So on Facebook, to be proper, you should have your personal profile and then what you do is you have groups, fan pages, a business page, events, and then there's other types of groups that you can join. That's really not a typo. It's, so when you look at, you have a group that you're sponsoring, like I have a group for authors and speakers, but then I join other people's groups who are about authors and speakers. And sometimes you can get more out of the groups who you are not the sponsor of the group because it's new information that other people haven't seen. Right? So there's multiple ways that you can use this. And LinkedIn, um, until somebody told me five years ago how to use LinkedIn, I was bored because they're IT people right? and they're recruiters. You're kind of engineer person? Yes. His face, right? I, it's, it's so uncanny. It's just so cool. Um, so on LinkedIn, you know how they have all these different groups? Join groups that relate to your business. And then start communications. And that's how you make LinkedIn work for you. So this is my homepage on Facebook. And you can see, you know, it's got the... Uh, 4,700 friends, uh, I have 495 people who have liked me. When I make a comment, it goes here. If I want to add a picture to the home page, it goes there. Um, you basically can see the fundamentals. This is so cool. Because of one of my contacts uh, on Facebook, I just got picked up by a speakers bureau in Canada, and that's what this is. So they're starting now to promote my sales program in Canada. And that's what I mean about social media. There's no way I could have done that without Facebook. And I've got hundreds of stories about social media, but I have to say Facebook is my favorite. It seems to build better relationships faster than any other social media out there. Um, this is kind of cool because you can see people who are your friends, their updates. Now when you have 4,700 friends, this is moving constantly. It's like a little newsreel, right? But this is the area for chat, and when it's green, these are the people who are online now. 
This William Lee, I didn't even notice that. William Lee is, is the person who designed the banner for Create Your Own Reality. I was on Facebook on a Sunday, and I wanted a new banner for the blog. And he was on, and he said, what are you up to? It's Sunday. And I said, oh, I'm just struggling because I need this banner. And he said, well, I can do it for you. And I said, can you do it today? And he said, sure. I said, well, how much? He said, $100. <laughs> I said, can you have it done in an hour? <laughs> <laughs> It was done in an hour, right? So it doesn't matter what you're looking for. I have found the contacts and the resources through Facebook. Um, not as much on LinkedIn, but I'll tell you that it's really uh, starting to make a little more sense to me on LinkedIn. So what happens on the general settings, um, turn off your email notification, right? Or you will be inundated in your inbox. I mean, just turn them off. You don't want any notifications. Then now they've got this ridiculous thing where I can come and add you to a group. Mm -hmm. Well, then you have to go back to the notifications in that group, opt out of the email notification. You can actually leave the group, but you want to make sure you do that. Right? Especially, I had somebody yesterday add me to a group of tennis shoe sales. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, exactly, please. And then. This is where you describe everything about you. So this is the about page. And you want to have as much detail there as possible. So imagine having 4,700 friends. I have to be very aware of who I'm adding, right? So there was a guy who kept pestering me, add me as a friend, add me as a friend. And he's sitting on a wooden box in Ghana, under a banyan tree, with a dog sitting at his feet. <laughs> Probably a really nice guy. But I don't think I could help him, and I don't really see why the relationship would exist. Mm -hmm. So I didn't add him. So you want to be aware of the people that you add. There's also people on um, Facebook, and this is kind of embarrassing, um, but I get at least two or three men every week who want to date me on Facebook. I don't get it. You know, there's lots and lots of dating sites. I'm not on them. But people are using Facebook for a social site, mm -hmm. right? So there's other areas that you can look to find out where your notifications are. So this is the bottom half. And I went through a lot of trouble when they added the new timeline. And if you haven't updated your timeline, you want to do that, right? So. What I did is I went back, I added pictures from growing up in Mendocino, from going to the San Francisco Zoo when I was four years old, from all the trips I've taken all over the world. I have details about things that I have done, and you can go to my timeline and see some of those things, my work history, and this is what makes people want to connect. Because it sounds more interesting, it actually sounds like um, and, and each of your slides actually replicates this, and it's so that you can actually make notes if there's something you want to follow up on. Or you can move your chair back there is if it's one, easier. Is there one available? Uh, hand up. Is there yeah. one more? Hand is there an extra one? Are you, you're, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you have an extra one. Very good. Thank you so much. Now, this kind of amazes me. In the last month, these ads, I keep finding really interesting things. So don't ignore the ads, all right? There's some really interesting things that you can follow up on. Um, yesterday, I saw an ad for a woman who's doing an author class in San Francisco. And so I just clicked on it, found her name, sent her uh, a request to add me as a friend, and hopefully we're going to connect. So you never know what you're going to find there or who you might find that's a good relationship for you. So don't always ignore the ads. And what I'm doing is actually looking in this area is where the, the major page of where everybody has actually got their updates. This is actually my niece and her husband and Halloween costume. Um, and here's the messages. And then usually if there's a personal message that they don't want other people to see, it'll go plus one here. And that's where all of the other people are leaving messages asking me to go out with them. And they live halfway across the world. Um, <laughs> then there's events. and. The events, people will add me to events because 
my name, A, B, B, I show up on everybody's page almost first. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Aardvark shows up before me, but that's about it. Um, and then, so you can actually see all the different the applications and games and some of the other things that you have here. I do not get poking. I mean, I understand it in concept and in theory, but it really is kind of silly. <laughs> It's lazy. It's, it, when it's lazy. Poking is lazy. Well, no, I mean, it's a, it's a virtual poke. You're like poking somebody to get their attention. Well, why not just send me a message? That's why I don't get I mean, if you're going to go to the trouble of poking me, send me a message. I have a question about the, you're putting a lot of persons, we're doing this for business. I have a personal Facebook and then I have a couple of businesses attached to it. They shouldn't be linked. I want my personal Facebook private. Um, and you're, say, suggesting putting all these very personal pictures on there for the... Only on your personal page. Okay. Yeah, only on your personal page. So I have my family pictures on my personal page, but I have separate pages for everything else that I do. Okay. Right? Now, I don't care if you know that I have a book and I have a fan page for the book, or I have a group, and you also know that my personal page goes with that. I really am branding myself as Sharon Abbott, so it really doesn't matter to me. But some people want to keep that completely separate. Yes? In my understanding that you're kind of using your personal page to seek out the other groups to get your, uh, your business? Kind of the opposite. Okay. My personal page is so that when somebody sees my page and they see something that relates to what they're doing, they're going to approach me. Right. I rarely I approach anybody else. I did it three times so far this week which is probably three times more than I've done it since January. But I found three people since Monday that are amazing, just absolutely incredible people. Um, so you want to be familiar, and I'll go over each of these, but up here on the top, all right, so these are the requests for friends. These are your personal messages that nobody else can see, the private messages. And then these messages are the ones that just show up here from anybody who you're a friend with who just pops up there. So if you haven't seen these last four messages, it shows you that you have four messages that you haven't looked at. So this is how when you click on it, how they actually show up. Now this is what I do. I click on the name and I go to their profile. I want to know who they are. I want to know what they do. And if they don't have a picture, and if they don't tell me who they are and what they do, I'll just don't do it, right? And every once in a while, I'll just say not now, but every once in a while, somebody will pester me. And so I can block them. Did you know you can block people? So you can actually keep them from ever contacting you again. I have a couple of topics that are irritating to me personally. So when somebody approaches me about those contacts, I just remove them as friends, and then I block them, right? It, it's nothing personal, I just don't want to hear about certain things. Um, now, this is where I was saying under the private messages, and then other is where usually somebody is saying, hey, you want to go out on a date? I, so, <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, so then these are the automatic. You can just hover over it, and you can actually see the messages that have just come up recently that other friends have put up there. So a lot of times, um, and this was interesting yesterday, this was probably after, um, there was um, a group, Transformational Coaches, and I was looking at the group on Sunday, and I said, I'm looking for 30 coaches to be in a program with me in Australia. And I had Carly, who answered, and she said, I want to talk to you let's have a live conversation on Monday. So I talked to Carly yesterday, and then she said, well, I have a partner, Joseph, and he really needs to talk to you. So Carly and Joseph are actually going to be going with me to Australia to speak. And then we're going to make them responsible for getting the other 28 coaches that I need to go along with me. So I'm telling you, Facebook is amazing. Why don't you, can you still see if you moved your chair a little closer that way? Save your oh, neck a little? Yeah, I'm experimenting with which side. <laughs> depends on which side of the screen you're on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. So this is one of my, um, my fan page that I set up. So I have an author program.
creative impressions and I'm just converting it now to author training programs. And so I have people, and this was the really sad thing, um, I had this up to over 1,500 people, and when they converted the timelines, they wiped everybody out. So you have to start over. So, if, you know, do it now. Uh, yeah, they wipe everybody out if you don't convert your timeline on time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I've lost thousands of people because I have, I'm going to say, eight different fan pages, you know, one for each book, I must make ten, and then I have two others for groups that I do. So if you haven't converted your groups, your fan pages, and your events to the timeline, the events don't use timelines, sorry. So you want to do that as soon as possible so that you're not actually losing them. So one of the people who had interviewed me, Lila, for Create Your Own Reality, she was one of the people on Facebook four years ago. Um, she surfaced only, her name was LH Friends, and I had no idea who this was. But she asked me to add her as a friend. And I'm thinking, I don't know. You know, I, I'm really close to my limit. I've got to be kind of careful about it. So I, I looked at her profile, and I said, she's into a lot of the same things that I am. So I added her, and then she sends me a note. And she said, it's so great to reconnect with you. I think, do I know you? And she said, oh, yeah, this is Lila. Use your name. You know, <laughs> don't be hiding behind <laughs> personality profile things. Yeah. Which limit were you referring to? You can only have 5,000 friends. Oh, okay. So I'm at 4751 or something like that. Do you have a fan page for your book? Are you using, like, I have a fan page for my book, so I use the name of the book as the fan page. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. I absolutely. thought you were just saying you can. No, 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 no. But don't use LH Friends like Lila did, because I have no idea who she is. And she's wearing a turban now. I mean, I've yeah. never I've recognized her. Um, but the cool thing was, you remember MySpace? Right? So I signed up for MySpace before I signed up for uh, LinkedIn. And so I was on, on, my, on MySpace, and I only had people like Robert Kiyosaki, Linda Forsyth, um, Jack uh, Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, only those people, right? No, no one like me. Only people who had really exceeded in their field. <coughs> Linda Forsyth was one of those people. So Lila reintroduces me to Linda Forsyth. And a week later, Linda said she wanted to interview me. And I'm thinking, that's cool, because I do interviews all the time. So she puts it up to her board of directors, and they do the interview, and they accepted me. I will now be on the cover of Mentors Magazine for August, nice. right? Yeah. And that's like Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, Bob Proctor, I mean, just the Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is in everything. Yeah, Chuck Norris is in everything. So, you know, you never know where these relationships are going to go. And it just keeps growing. So, you know, look at this as if you spend an hour a day, that's a lot. Because I pop in for maybe five minutes at a time. Because I don't want to go look like, I was out a week ago for the entire day and I came back and there were 44 messages on Facebook, 575 emails, you know, I don't like to go too long. I only look at my emails once a day. And um, this is, I don't know if you can make yourself do this. You've all heard of Tim Ferriss, you know, 4-Hour Work Week, right? Mm -hmm. So Tim went from working 80 hours a week to 4 hours a week. But what I got out of his book was email should not control you, you should control email. And you can actually, if you don't use this now, you should be having your name at your website.com. And then have a Gmail account and forward that email to Gmail because Gmail has one of the best filtering systems there is. So you can filter out all the spam, and you can set those spam filters so that you don't have to be looking at hundreds. I was getting 1,500 emails a day, and I'm down to about 300, and I'm just working with somebody in Australia who's showing me how to get that down to less than 50 a day, just by using spam, spam filters. It takes a little bit of learning, but what I probably, maybe 15 years ago, was that I would bring in an organizational specialist one January, and then I'd bring in a time management specialist the next January, and then I'd flip-flop them for, so that I could learn to be more efficient. 
And I literally can get as much done in a week as I used to get done in a week. Right? I'm, I love saving time on things. When you learn how to use what you have efficiently, it is amazing how much more you can accomplish. Because the idea is the more you, less effort it takes you to do what you want to do, the more free time you have. Some people it's time, some people it's money, some people it's the freedom. But whatever it is that you're working for, you can have more of it if you take a step back and look at what you're doing now. Social media, if you don't manage it, can just eat up tons of your time. So give yourself that a lot of hotels believe in a full-time social media person to keep up with it. It takes less than an hour a day, even the way. And you'll see that I'm just everywhere. I'm on absolutely everything. So this the admin panel. It tells you how many messages, the repost, the activity. And so you can actually see there's a, I had no idea. Heart portal. Her name is, took me forever. And she said that she got so many e emails from Facebook that she decided to actually change her name on Facebook so she wouldn't get that many. My email on Facebook goes to an account that I never look at. Because if Facebook has to send me a message that I really need, when I log into Facebook, it'll say, hey, you haven't seen this. So it'll tell me. So I don't want to be looking at emails from people who are just selling stuff. It is improper to actually sell anything, try to sell anything to anybody that you've met on Facebook. This is not designed to actually have you spamming people who are your friends. You not post your product on other people's pages. You can actually get blocked. You can lose your account. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and I'll deny it if you ever tell anybody I said this. <laughs> I have an alter ego on Facebook. Her name is Jill Jensen. So here I have 4,500 friends six months after I had discovered how to use Facebook, and I'm doing these tele no problem when it was 2,500 friends day teleseminar program where I'm teaching people who have lost their jobs how to launch their own business. And all of a sudden, the first notice I sent out to my own group, Facebook shut me down, and I lost all of my 4,500 friends. Wow. Now I steamed and boiled and, you know, got really upset. And I thought, they don't care if I'm not there. So I had to launch a whole new page. But this time, instead of six months, it actually took me 40 days to get back up to 4,500. That's when I decided to create the alter ego. So when I need to promote something, Jill only has 700 friends. And so Jill promotes everything that I do. Jill joins groups and promotes to those groups what I do. I don't promote myself. So it's something you might want to look at. You know, it's, it's just <laughs> rebuilding. Wasn't that fun? Well, the hard part was I was at a place in Facebook where it asked me <laughs> to import uh, a CSV file. And what I did was I exported my customer list who had opted in for, you know, we want to receive information. So I inputted that into, or imported it rather, into Facebook, and the very next day it said, you're banned for 30 days. Right. Well, that was four months ago. I'm still banned. Still banned. Yeah. So here's something. And there's nothing I can say or here, do. Here's something I'll tell you that will actually um, make, and I really appreciate the fact that you're here today. Because you know how many people should be here that aren't? You know how many people are struggling in business that are always just getting by, but they never take it upon themselves to go out and learn anything new? So, you know, I really want to congratulate all of you for being conscious enough about your business, because I believe that entrepreneurs have a responsibility to their business community to do well, right? Because you are the bread and butter of the business community. Did you know that over 97% of all businesses in this country have fewer than 50 employees? Out of 22 million business tax forms that are filed, 90% are entrepreneurs. 87% of all of this country's economy is driven from you as an entrepreneur. That's a huge responsibility as an entrepreneur. So the more that you look at doing better with what you have, the more your community flourishes. Right? If you go to the Bay Area, the numbers are ridiculous. How many companies fail? It's worse than one in uh, ten actually succeed. 
right? You have to go to 20 businesses to get one who will actually be there after five years. But anybody can do well if you actually keep educating yourself. I always recommend that you even take like a sales training class at least once a year. You probably already know this stuff, but it reinforces it. The first time I heard um, um, Brian Tracy say, you know, use your car as a university on wheels, I was like, gosh, that makes sense. You know, we've got all this downtime in the car. Get business CDs. Listen to audio programs to help re-educate yourself or, you know, build a more solid foundation in what you need to do. Before you switch the page, can I ask you about the activity? What does that exactly mean about the little chart? I've seen well, chart. yeah, this is my analysis that you won't see, and I can turn it off so I don't see, you know, by turning the admin on. But this is how many posts I've done and how many people have reposted it, right? Oh, okay. Notifications, any activity that I've done. What, which line is which? Um, I, can, I can address that. You see, that it says, talking about me is the green. So those are the ones that repost? Those are the ones that are reposting, and then this is my activity. And it's not necessarily reposting. Talking about this is simply a like. It's counted in that category. Mm -hmm. Reach means how many people who may have liked you or that appeared on their page. That right. It's just an impression of them seeing it. Um, and it's, it took me a little while to realize, like, oh, going, oh, okay. Every time that you get so something this likes. Was, this was my relaunch of this page right here. That's why it's so much higher than what it is today. Right, so I've had to relaunch every one of my fan pages, all my groups, just because when they changed the timeline, I lost everything. So I'm having to start from scratch. Yes? Can I ask you about, uh, to maybe expand more on the alter ego <laughs> idea? Did you start a whole new Facebook yeah. page? Yeah, Jill has her own Facebook page. I should have yeah. put a picture of her. She's really cute. She's and, 35 uh, years old. Right? <laughs> 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 she builds up her own Facebook friends. <laughs> Yeah. Pardon? She builds up her own list yeah, of friends. Yeah, she's got 700 friends. Yeah, yeah. she's just a dynamo. Yeah, she graduated she, San Francisco State shill. University. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so she, she's your shill, basically? Yeah, basically she is, yeah. She's okay. the one that brags about me. Yeah, okay. she really likes me. Five years ago. And I actually created a couple of girls like profiles and get on guys and tell them to come into my bar. It's very effective. Here's what I have learned. You tell me what the rules are, I'll work within your rules, but I work to make sure that they're working for me. Right? So sometimes when you think about Facebook started out to just be a, a format for college students to be connected, right? It wasn't until 2008, five years after it launched, that it became a business site. And then it wasn't even until really three years ago that people started recognizing the power of this. So you want to look at what you can do to make it work for you, not for you working under the guidelines that they have. All right, so... Um, <laughs> this is one of the groups. This is what I was telling you. This is um, the Abundance Village, and I just love this group. Uh, it is so incredible. Oh, this is actually my group. This is my speakers and authors group. So I'm actually speaking tonight over in Redwood City or Mountain View. Mountain View, right? Um, <laughs> it's 6.30 tonight. <laughs> kind of a busy day today. Um, so I can actually promote my groups. Actually, what happened is Ruby puts my group event on the site, then I copy that, and then I redirect <coughs> traffic, right? So it's that constant, how much momentum can you get behind something you're doing? So the speakers and authors page, and these are some of my speakers and some of my authors, and so this is really easy. When I post it here, anybody who is on that group gets my notification, right? Then Jill does the notification, then Ruby does the notification, and then I have a number of real friends who also do the notification. So she, she, she's more she's Ruby's family, actually. Ruby's family. So we have all of this cross-promotion going on, which is how you build that kind of momentum with less effort. You know, that's the part. You don't want to get to the point where you're spending all your time doing this. Um, this site is Ruby's event site. Right? This is the page that Ruby created 
to say, here, Sharon's going to be speaking at the East West Bookstore. So when you do an event, you want to be able to do that, but you need to tap in and invite the people that you know who are in the area. And, and this was something else that just irritated the heck out of me. You know how notifications, you can actually take your friends and put them in little category groups? Mm -hmm. Well, they wiped out most of those categories. And I had been diligent in putting people just Bay Area, just authors, just speakers. And now I can't access it. So now I have to go back and recreate things. So if you want to invite people to an event, you have to go to your friends list and go, oh yeah, she lives in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty hard to do, you know, when you're just looking at these pictures that, you know, like a half an inch tall. So I'm trying to come up with new ways, and this is what I was going to tell you, that make this whole thing worth your while. Create a brand new Yahoo, only Yahoo email. <coughs> they have an import your Facebook contacts list. So the opposite of what you did, Russell. You want to get people off of Facebook as soon as you can and put them in your own database so that you don't lose them. And this is a dynamite way of being able to do that. Once you have the CSV file, I recommend using iContact. A lot of people use AWeber, a lot of people use Constant Contact. For me, the one that is the easiest and friendliest to use is iContact. Because when I get to my limit in one area, they actually pick up the phone and call me. Right? Isn't that nice to actually have real customer service when you're using something? Mm -hmm. So my criteria when I'm using a service is that I always want to know if they actually have real people that speak English that I can get problems solved 24-7. Because I don't know when I'm going to be working on something and I run into some conflict mm -hmm. that I need resolution. So I love eye contact. They were just purchased by a huge conglomerate, so I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen with them. But I love the way eye contact is set up. So I was going to ask you, it's a little bit off that subject, but I wanted to ask you, I had my business set as a separate Facebook. It, were you saying that you have yours as fan page and not actually a separate Facebook No, I page? have a business page, uh -huh. but the business page, multiple business pages, might be the speakers and authors, and I also have fan pages, and I also have groups. Okay. And then I also join other people's but groups. But they're associated with your personal account? So or did you, you set up a separate account? To Sharon Abbott, you're going to see on the search results, there's hundreds of Sharon Abbott's, right? Four years ago, I was the only Sharon Abbott there. Then a Sharon Abbott in Australia, same spelling, showed up. And I actually still write to her and her husband, Jason. And I mean, so now there's all these kids with the same spelling. So, but you'll see that over half of them are me because of my fan pages, my group pages, mm -hmm. and all the other things. Even my event pages will show up if I set it up as Sharon Abbott. See, I'm branding myself as Sharon Abbott. But you know, if you have a business name, you might not do that. So what I've done, I'm branding the book, mixing it up, but I'm also simultaneously branding Sharon Abbott because, believe it or not, <coughs> I actually have groupies. People want to know what else am I doing. And so I try to make it easy for them. So when they search Sharon Abbott, I just finished my ninth book last Tuesday. So it will actually show up and everybody who knows me will actually get a notification that my book is being released. Ruby, what date is that? The 23rd? Next week, yes. No, 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 no. June 23rd, right? Sacramento? Oh, Sacramento. Uh, yeah, June 23rd. June 23rd. It, it, that's what that book is for. It's called Nesting, Neuro-Emotional Anti-Sabotage Technique, Removing Every Negative Emotion Anybody Has Ever Been Exposed to. It's the coolest thing. <laughs> is that yes. the name of the book? Yeah. Oh, Nesting, Nesting. Neuro-Emotional Anti-Sabotage Technique. How many business pages are you allowed? There's no limit. You can have as many as you want. Yeah, Corey. Is it illegal to export your Facebook contacts into an email list? It's not illegal. Well, doesn't can spam say you have to opt people in? Facebook is oh, the same thing. No, no. Because you can import your email list to iContact, and then you send them, I'm adding you to my email list if you want to opt out. 
you can. And then that's the double opt-in. But an opt-out or an opt-in? It works if they don't opt out, now they're opted in. Okay. That's their choice. And that's, that's, that's legal? That's perfectly legal. Okay. Absolutely perfectly legal. If I just send you an email and say, I'm adding you to my list, is that okay? If you don't say remove me, and eye contact makes it easy. Because if they say remove me, I don't touch it. I contact us. And then they send me a notification who opted out. By the way, AWeber will not allow that. Well, it's another reason to like eye contact. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm really struggling to set it up so that when I want to post something on Facebook, I've got a personal page and I've got a business page, and I don't seem to get to choose as I'm posting it which page it, it appears on. Oh, it's yeah. totally your choice. Yeah, so if I go to my profile page and I update my notification, that's my personal information. Like Sunday we were down at um, the... Um, Capers restaurant in San Jose and watch the eclipse, right? So that's a personal thing. But if I want to post something on my speakers and authors page about going to Australia for the speakers and authors program, that goes on that business page. So okay. it's where you put it. All right, so I'm talking about sharing from someplace other than Facebook. Say I'm on a blog and I want to share it on Facebook. It's still, you know, like it's when you do a group, you do an event, you now can actually have like my group, speakers and authors, is facebook.com forward slash speakers authors, right? I can take that link, know what your links are. And when you say, I have just posted this, facebook.com forward slash speakers authors, then that's where they go, that business page. But if you say, go to my Facebook profile, they're going to go to your personal page unless you tell them different. But I want to post it, I want to be able to choose on the fly. Well, so that's how you do it. What? You have to give every page that you're on its own identification. I think he's asking a different question. Yeah. In Facebook, you up in the right Other hand pages, corner, you if you're if you're you're trying to do a post from Facebook and you want No no no, I'm on a blog and I just okay. want to post it on my Facebook either my personal it. page oh, okay. or on my business yeah, I want to share. I'll, I'll on my business you, I'll page. I'll show you in a second how you, okay. how you do that Thank easily. Yeah. And, and literally, if there is a shortcut I have found it out, or I will. I mean, it's, it's, it's just anything that actually helps. So um, this was what I was talking about. This is the Abundance Village. This is Linda Forsyth, and she lives in San Diego. And this is Stu, who interviewed me, uh, and Lila. They were together, and that's who introduced me to Linda Forsyth again. And this is the most incredible group of people. Um, they're so conscious. They're looking for ways of re-educating people about being in the now and how we can actually make this a better place everywhere we go. Like, you ever see people throwing litter out of their car? Mm -hmm. I actually was brave enough last week to pull up next to somebody who was throwing their sunflower seeds outside of the window and say, did you know that you can actually get a thousand dollar fine for littering for doing that? It was a little scary, but you know what, it, it just bothers me when people do things that are unconscious. So I love this group of people because they're really about the education. Pointing at the screen, that works really well. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my Twitter accounts. And um, there are several programs that you can use to get more Twitter followers. And when I do a post on tweet or Twitter, right, so I'm tweeting, and it goes out to only 400, 450 people max out of that 7,000 people. It does not go to everyone. Now, the more people they have that they're following, the less likely they're going to see what I tweet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that the people who are following you have maybe 100, 200 people that they're following. Otherwise, they will never see what you tweet. Do you find that you get a lot of business from Twitter? No. Okay. No, but relationships, yes. Okay. Right. How do you develop a relationship on Twitter? I actually will show you in, in you see, um, this is my uh, LinkedIn account, and you can see the inbox and you can see people who have sent you messages and people who want to add you 
Um, I'm at, they don't even count it anymore. And then these are my groups. This was the secret to LinkedIn that made all the difference in the groups. So I just joined six groups in Australia to actually start promoting my speaking and author program in Australia. And then I post messages, I answer <laughs> messages, I add people. I'll tell you what, last week this was so cool. There's a publishing company that's on LinkedIn and they said, We've looked at everything on LinkedIn. We've looked at all of your profiles. I know they couldn't because I've got 32 blogs. There's no way they could have looked at everything. So they went and they, they decided that they want to promote me as the featured speaker in an event that happens with 200 authors here in the U.S. That's how powerful it is when you put your information everywhere that's consistent. The picture's the same. The information's the same. You're branding yourself as that is the person. Right? This is who I am. This is what I do. The groups are really powerful. And you just go over here to the groups and search your keywords to find people. And I've got another suggestion. If you find people that you want to emulate or connect with on LinkedIn, you can look at their groups Absolutely. and be able to... That, that's been a really good key. Find out who the top people are um, going into what groups, and then you'll find groups that work better. Um, you can also, when you're looking at the groups, you can see how many members there are. You know, look at the questions that are being asked and answered on the group to see if it works for you. If you're not getting any activity, drop the group. Start your own group. You know, so there's lots of ways of making LinkedIn work now. But I was actually on LinkedIn uh, since 2005 and really didn't find it that effective until somebody said, oh, you've got to join groups. And then it's, it's working great. So um, this is... One of the secrets in suite, H O O T S U I T E dot com. When I, H O O T S U I T E dot com, Hootsuite is a way that when I do, uh, I want to notify um, that I've just done a post and I can pick and choose who is actually going to receive it. Is it going to go to Facebook? Is it going to go to my blog? Um, Twitter account? Is it going to go to my um, Sharon Abbott account? Which I pick and choose where it goes. Right? And I could pick them all. And when I do a post on blogging, I can say, I just <coughs> discovered this new plugin for blogging that's absolutely incredible. And then when I hit send and I've checked all of these, it's posted on Facebook, Facebook fan page, on everything that I have that relates to that. And this is free. Uh, I've seen Hootsuite before. I have no idea it did any of this. Yeah. I mean, so you're telling me this is the answer. So now you're happy you came today. Well, I was happy before we started, but, <laughs> you know, he, I'm trying to get my head around what you just said. From Hootsuite, I can take a blog and share it deliberately on specific locations. So you know how you do a... a a tweet <coughs> on Twitter. Think about this as a shortcut. You've just done an update on your blog and you're doing like a tweet and then you pick and choose where you want it to land. Your Facebook home page, your Facebook landing page, your, your event page, your group page. Where do you want it? Do you want it to show up on LinkedIn? You can have it show up on all of them. Yes? You have to be a tweeter to use that? No. Twitter? Nope. <laughs> if you have, since you have a whole bunch of different Facebook pages, how do you get it to go on the specific one that you want? Because when I set it up, I tell it which one I want. But it always goes to the same one? No. I can pick and choose where I want. Okay. But you change it do here. You, do you know? I change it here. Okay. For each blog? For each post that I want somebody to know. So under the little arrow, it has the different Facebook ones. I, I've been using Ping FM to post things on a bunch of different things, yeah. but that one you have to would have to do it the same every time. Right. Yeah. I like the flex. I tell you, I find these things, and they are really cool. Yeah. I'll make one other comment about this. I'm in the process of kind of planning out my blog, and I did a lunch with Sheila today, taking her inspiration of saying that this is a good example where you can separate your content which fits into your email marketing, your blogging, and the other thing you're doing from your distribution. And knowing that the same content piece 
can be molded and shaped so that it goes out on your email newsletter, it's on your blog, and different versions may be paired to meet the right kind of audience. Right. Like with Twitter, you want to do something that's for the ADD crowd, right. whereas if somebody's on LinkedIn, you want it and, to be professional. And truly, now they're saying that people aren't reading tweets. They're actually sending tweets, but the majority of the people aren't reading tweets. 10% of people open emails, so it's not working. You have to use mobile text to actually get people's attention now. Yes, sir. Can you use Hootsuite for mobile text? No, not yet. But I imagine. Clout, how many of you have heard of Clout? Um, I'm going to say jury's still out. I don't find it that beneficial, uh, although I found people on Clout that I didn't know existed. Now, I'm using Clout. I have a nonprofit organization called the Ultimate Business University, and I'm taking 300 boys off the streets from the United States, moving them to a high school program in Belize. And so I'm using Clout. Uh, is this Google Plus? Favors and Google Plus to actually promote my nonprofit, right? So this is what I am doing here. I'm actually um, connecting Google Plus to my nonprofit. So this is how I'm separating Sharon Abbott, speaker, author, and then my philanthropic work. Make sense? I really don't think that Google Plus is much different than what Facebook, LinkedIn, or any of them. They're gathering different audiences, um, just like Foursquare, um, Pinterest. Um, this is dynamite. I haven't really gotten into it yet, but you can actually promote your work. You can list different works. You can do a lot of amazing things on Pinterest. I just haven't gotten there yet. Yes? Um, Google Plus, um, one thing it's an advantage of it if you have a, you know, a business uh, website, um, it's Google Plus is basically based, uh, is Google's version of Facebook, and they put a lot of um, relevant to con into its uh, determination of organic placement on the actual website? Yeah, but you know, honestly, I, I've been playing around with it, and I still don't see that it's all that much of an advantage. And yeah. you have to pick and choose. You know, how much time do you have? You know, I personally am looking at a virtual assistant. You know, I've been talking to Claudia, who's just a dynamo, and I can say, this is what I need. Will you drive this part of my social media? And sometimes that's a whole lot better than me doing it because they're efficient instead of me looking at it and getting sidetracked because somebody's got an interesting profile. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, Can I think just about hear it. If, did it help you traffic? Or you yeah, I, well, actually, we, 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 I, I work for a company that actually does online marketing. And <coughs> what it actually you seen is a person go from the fifth page of Google to the first page of Google in the organic section of the website from having nine Google Pluses. Nothing mm -hmm. else. They didn't have an old website. They just had nine Google Pluses because in, in Google's uh, uh, how they determine organic placement, their uh, their algorithm <coughs> is taking consideration after May first with the new. Um, you know, there, there's yeah. a lot of good things with so Google, if you Google Plus. Plus things that helps your website. Yeah, but again, Definitely. you know, I'm going to recommend that you really start looking at outsourcing using a virtual assistant because you can just get buried in this stuff otherwise. You know, hire somebody who knows what they're doing. I came back to favors because about two months ago, this is an application from Facebook, somebody asked me to go sign up on favors, and I did, and I got frustrated because I couldn't figure it out. And then the other day, somebody said, will you go over here and just endorse me? And I did. And what's really cool, you can actually go here and um, validate someone. And then when you build up points, when you have people from your Facebook or Twitter come in, you can actually gain points and then have, like I'm doing an event in Mountain View, I can ask people, if you know of anybody who is in the Bay Area, will you help me promote my event? And it's done. And so this is in what? It's favors. That's no, it's not. If you look at this, it's really weird. F A V O dot or R S forward slash. And don't worry about the rest of it. You, you can that doesn't it always forward. come up when you do just that. Really? No. No, it doesn't always. I mean, I'm. Engineers! Really... Yeah! <laughs> no, you have to be really careful so sometimes. So it's not related to Facebook you know. or. It is a Facebook application, it's but it's somebody else okay. that actually created that on Facebook. 
Oh, it's a Facebook app. Do you know anything about Branch Out on Facebook? No, I haven't used that yet. I'm kind of at my limit as far as what I want to learn. You know, I, I, I it's like after a while it kind of gets in your way. I mentioned Pinterest. Um, I, I really haven't gotten there yet. Now, this is something that I want everyone to be aware of. I saw a study in 1995 that said people who speak in their business community earn 40% more than those who don't. If you are not speaking in your business community, you need to get out there. So I created a program called Speak Easy. It's everything from the very beginning, how you create titles that are enticing. Like mixing it up, the Entrepreneur's New Testament is all about using the business community. How you create a title that's catchy. You know, how you make people want to bring you in. How you use different organizations to get the exposure where all of the people in that organization are potentially your clients. So if you're a realtor and you go to the Board of Realtors meeting, how many clients are you going to get out of that event? Zero, right? So you want to go to events, might be investment clubs where somebody in an investment club might look at doing real estate as an investment. So you have to start thinking about how you use your business community. So I created this author program that is just off the hook. After I did mixing it up, I had several people who said that they had always wanted to write a book, but it seems too daunting. Well, I spent 20 years in the printing industry. And so to me, it kind of was a logical step by step. And I wanted to speak in Sacramento at a KCBS show that they were sponsoring, and Tom um, Clancy was the uh, event promoter. And I said, Tom, I want to speak at your event. And he said, well, what's the title of your book? I said, I don't have one. And he said, then you can't be my speaker. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, what's the date? And he said, June 3rd, and this was January 15th. And I said, no problem, I'll have my book. <laughs> it's called Mixing It Up. <laughs> I literally picked up Mixing It Up the a day of the event on the way to Sacramento. I mean, I knew a local binder, you know. I'm in a jam, can you help me out? I've done favors for them, and so I did. So this is actually um, 12 years old, June 3rd. And it's the new reversed, re revised vision. It now has the blogging, and it has um, the social media speaking, and all the different things included in this. But there's audio programs. So what I found is that some people are tactile and they want to read a book. Some people are clear audio and they prefer hearing the information. So I convert my material. So when you're speaking, I usually record what I'm speaking unless I've done it over and over again. And then I take that recording and I burn it to a CD. And then I have companies that actually burn them for a dollar a piece and put the label on them. Now you have a product. But what I found is that if you put the product in a DVD case, it has more value. <laughs> Pretty amazing, huh? You put it in a fancy little binder, it has more value. Mm -hmm. So I created this author program where I can show anyone how to get published in six weeks, writing their book one hour a day. The book is in your hand in six weeks. And your website will be in the top one-tenth of one percent of all websites in the world in four to six weeks. It includes being able to do 18 pre-press lessons, including how you get your ISBN number, get your book registered in the Library of Congress, how to use radio stations to get interviews. So I have 1,500 radio stations that are looking for authors to interview. So you can actually create a big buzz around your book. And it doesn't really matter what the book concept is on. There are radio stations looking for guests every single day. Some of them from 6 in the morning to midnight. So they have to fill a lot of different interviews. Yes, sir. I think I just, in the last 60 seconds, I've just gone into overwhelm. Could you just <laughs> tell me which book <coughs> says what you just said? The, it's the author <laughs> training program, author which is training. not a book. It's but a, the it's how to write your book, this is your right to write, see the difference in the title, your right to write, teaches you how to write your book in six weeks, one hour a day. And everybody thinks a book is like this monumental Did it also, also include those very interesting statistics That's the that whole, you just said? The, the whole program, yes, yes, absolutely.
So what I want you to do and why I'm telling you about this, you know, I love coming out and speaking to people because there will be one person, you know, Zig Ziglar was one of my all-time heroes, love the guy, and Og Mandino, such an inspiration to me. And one time Og was saying that, you know, he had gone to this event in Colorado and this woman had had tickets for months ahead of time and she kept saying, I'm going, I'm not going, I'm going, I'm not going. Finally, you know, it's snowing Friday night, and she says, well, nah, I'm not going to drive an hour and a half to get there. She wakes up 6 o'clock in the morning without an alarm. It's crystal clear blue day. So she gets in the car, and she goes up to Denver, and there's Og, and she sits all the way up at the top of the, the, um, the theater in the nosebleed section. When it was all done, she comes down, she waits until she's the only one left on stage with, with, with Mr. Mandino, and she said, I know that everybody else heard you, but I felt you in my heart. And Og said, oh, you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that you find inspiration in this, more than anything being in action. The law of attraction is about making a plan, setting up the plan, building relationships, and tying things together so that you always have something that you are working towards that's fun, interesting, and makes your life worthwhile. So thank you all very much. I felt you in my heart. And Og said, oh, you're the one. <laughs> so I hope that you find inspiration in this, more than anything being in action. The law of attraction is about making a plan, setting up the plan, building relationships, and tying 